Is After Effects a 3D software? Well, people say no, not necessarily, but there's still many 3D features available to you. So let's push After Effects to its 3D limit and break down how to create 3D objects coupled with 3D camera movement and of course, 3D lighting. It all sounds advanced, but I promise, it's all very easy. Let's get started. Speaking of advanced, when you create your composition to get started, be sure to set the 3D renderer to Advanced 3D. The reason we're not using Cinema 4D unlike most of my tutorials is because we're going to be implementing HDRI maps which will make your 3D work look amazing. So even though After Effects says advanced, again, this is not advanced as we'll follow a simple roadmap to accomplish your vision. We'll create a floor and background add in some 3D objects, set up our lighting, and lastly, camera movement. So create a solid background that you'll like, and I'll set mine to a light gray. For the floor, we'll create a white solid, but make the dimensions super large, like 5,000 by 5,000. We go big here on Sunduck Film. Then make the layer 3D, navigate to rotation, and set the X rotation to 90 degrees. Then lower the Y position down a touch. Okay, perfect. Step one is complete. For step two, we'll create our 3D objects. This is where you can pretty much create any 3D object or import your own custom 3D object. But to keep it simple for now, I'll select the rectangle tool, create a perfect square by holding shift on my imaginary keyboard, and be sure to center this bad boy and make sure the anchor point is centered as well. And because we're creating a cube, we'll go to the size and make it 300 by 300. Then of course, remember this number when you make the layer a 3D object, go to the extrusion depth and set it to 300. Now, as I manipulate space and time, we have a perfect cube. And now since I'm feeling young and artistic again, we'll set this to two views and the second view to right. Now that we're seeing the world in the three dimensions, I would like to rotate this cube, but first we need to set the Z anchor point to 150 or half of the size, which was 300 as we remember. Now we can rotate this by 45 degrees or whatever you want to do. And using the right position, we can lower the cube to the floor perfectly. Nice, mathematically pleasing on the right, aesthetically not pleasing on the left. Which makes us move on to our third step, lighting. Now, we'll revisit creating more 3D objects later, but for attention span's sake, we gotta keep moving. So create a light, and normally I would select a point light, but because we're in advanced 3D, we have the option to use an environment light. This light is amazing for one specific reason, HDRIs, which stands for High Dynamic Range Image. You can typically search for free HDRI maps, and I'll link the one that I'm using, but import it into your project and set the source on your light to be that HDRI map. And just to show you how easily you can change the mood of your scene, here's a couple of others that I have in my final composition. So this is pretty cool and that's all there's to it for step three. Before we move on to our next technique, be sure to pick up our free motion duck templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro. And if you find yourself needing to save precious time on all your projects, we have over 35,000 templates to help you produce amazing work with the link below. Step four is creating beautiful camera movement. Now, when you create your camera, you need to think about the focal length. By default, uh, 50 millimeter is the norm, but for this video, I'm going to use 28 millimeter, which will make objects feel further away from one another, though it's best for you to cycle through the options and figure out what works best for your project. With our camera, I can move it by cycling through the different camera tools so I can get lower on the ground, dolly in, and pretty much do whatever. And you can animate the position and the point of interest with the camera, and this will give your scene movement. But if you're crazy like me, I want the camera to spin around the entire scene. To do this, create a null object, make it 3D, then go to Y rotation, alt click the stopwatch, and you can type time asterisk 100, and then parent the camera to the null and watch your scene orbit forever. And that's the four primary steps to creating 3D scenes. And I told you it was easy, but I hope you're thinking, what the heck am I supposed to do with just a cube? Zero out of 10 tutorial. Well, the tutorial goes on. And next we'll talk about creating more advanced objects and of course, how to import any 3D object. All right, let me jump forward and show you how to import any 3D object first. So you can import .obj 3D models into After Effects with the workflow that we used in this video. You can search for free OBJs of 3D objects that you want. And I'll go ahead and link this asset that I found on CG Trader. Also, be sure to get the .mtl file as well. Then when you're ready, import the OBJ into your project and you may need to rename the .mtl file to fit the correct path. 
and then import the OBJ again if you received that message. When you import an OBJ into your composition, trust me when I say, select, make comp size every single time and click OK. Then you can reposition, animate, and do whatever you want with your 3D object. Yeah, it's pretty much that easy. Now, let's jump back and talk about creating more complex 3D objects. For example, a sphere. And believe me when I tell you, you're not supposed to be able to create actual 3D spheres in After Effects. I guess Adobe wants us to use uh, the CC sphere effect, which is just an effect and not a real uh, 3D object like our cube. So here's how to create a real sphere in After Effects. Uh, you can create a perfect circle with the ellipse tool, uh, make the size of the circle two, uh, and now you can't see it, but make the layer 3D and then go into the geometry options. Uh, set the extrusion to two, the bevel style to convex, and the bevel depth to 100. And I must say, this is top secret. Don't tell Adobe you know how to create a sphere. But using the top view, we can easily move, resize using scale, and duplicate the sphere around the center point of our scene. And now we're building out a more detailed 3D environment. So I'm skipping ahead here to cut out repetition, but I went ahead and created a 3D rectangle with our sphere on top like this. A quick way to duplicate this around the center of our scene in a circle is to create a null object and parent those objects to the null then rotate the null. And then when you're ready, duplicate the objects again, unparent the already rotated objects, and continue this process. You know, I know this was totally simplified, but the point is now just to have fun and be creative. You can also turn logos and objects into 3D if you have their vector file. You can convert, say, an Illustrator file into a shape layer, and then apply all the same 3D principles to those shape layers. So now we have a 3D duck. <laughs> so subscribe if you want to be the best, and always be creative.